Hi guys, last few weeks I spent on modeling behavior of the drivetrain. What we have here is a kind of snowmobile configuration with the track and the two ski. We have visual elements of the drivetrain, so this is the engine. These are two clutch plates, a manual gearbox, and the gearbox is connected to a sprocket. Alongside with visual elements, there are four components which drive the logic and uh, like approximate the behavior of the whole thing. Let's see how this works. Majority of combustion engines, they are not capable of uh, uh, starting themselves, let's say. You need a starter engine for that. And uh, what I can do is uh, press on the throttle with a W, then I press and hold E, which enables the starter engine, but nothing actually moves. And the reason for that is because uh, right now the whole drivetrain is locked and the starter engine is simply not powerful enough to start spinning tracks. First thing to solve this, first what I need to do is press shift which will declutch the engine from the rest, rest of the drivetrain. Now I press on the throttle, I enable starter and engine starts. Perfect. Uh, this specific engine has idle RPM of 1200 and it will try to maintain it by um, on the background by releasing the by pressing on the throttle. As you see if uh, RPM tries to draw below 1200 it will just stay it will it will try to keep it up. So let's throttle up. Now release the clutch pedal and everything starts to move. As we get to a yellow zone I can try to shift up so I press C to shift up and then I need to declutch and release the clutch again. Now in the second gear to get into third gear is the same I press on the C then I declutch and now we are in the third gear. Uh, what so what is simulated so far on engine side uh, the engine drag is simulated and en engine drag is what allows engine braking so let's start again to show you example so now the engine is working and if I release the throttle pedal engine starts to slow down and uh, this is not really a mechanical friction of the engine. The reason why this happens is because when the third pedal is not pressed, the cylinders are getting very little air. As you press on the throttle pedal, you uh, release the valves on the cylinders and the air and the fuel can get into the cylinder. But the throttle is not pressed, very little air gets in and a cylinder as the piston moves down in a cylinder it creates a drag so this is why engine slows down as uh, you see the rpms they fall down quite rapidly by themselves um, sorry and uh, not by themselves by when the engine is uh, declutched from the rest of the drivetrain so let's release the clutch we start moving let's wait when it gets to a yellow zone now if I release the throttle, RPM are dropping, but they are not dropping as fast as it was happening before. And the reason for that is because now the engine, the engine drag which is created, it has to deal with the moment of inertia of the rest of the drivetrain, like with the tracks and the gear box and, and the, the clutch plate on the gearbox side. The, what else is simulated? The gearbox. So um, the gearbox is a manual and it has a collar gear. The collar gear connects the, um, the gears of the gearbox uh, to the drive shaft. In order for this connection to actually happen the velocities on the lay shaft and the drive shaft should be somewhat similar. Uh, there is a synchro 
on the color and the sinker will help to equalize those uh, velocities so let's get to speed first so that I don't stall the engine if I shift up too early now if I press C to switch to a next gear as you see at the bottom left it says that I am in neutral and in the bracket it says into which gear I want to switch the reason why I'm in neutral right now is that the sinker has a hard time of actually equalizing the velocities on the lay, lay and drive shaft if I declutch then it gets locked and now I'm in a second gear the same if I want to shift down if I want to get back to a first gear I press Z declutch now I'm in the first gear what this allows to do is a proper simulation that what happens if you actually try to get to reverse while you're moving so I switch to rear, rear backwards gear I release the clutch now we're moving backwards uh, the other important update with this system is um, as I mentioned earlier we have these four components which drive the logic the reason why it's actually done as a separate components and not just the one single thing which would be much easier is uh, pretty simple let me show you a diagram so this is how it's set up right now we have the engine component we have clutch we have gearbox and we have track sprocket so this is the example that i was showing then if we look at the, how the regular car drivetrain is assembled so the same we have engine we have clutch we have gearbox we have a differential and then we have uh, wheels wheel hubs or you know in, in case of tank that would be sprockets but then if we go to something like uh, older tanks uh, especially was the soviet tanks at the beginning of world war ii a lot of them have had this kind of setup where you have the engine you have the main clutch you have the gearbox a differential and then the differential is connected to steering clutches and after the steering clutches you have tracks then uh, if we look at the, uh, some of the german tanks then or yeah i'm not sure if russians had it anyway so on some of the german tanks the design of the steering mechanism was uh, in following way you had the engine you had the clutch you had gear gearbox differential and then you had two steering gear boxes and only after that you had connection to the tracks each of these system has its benefits and the uh, downsides and uh, in principle it's not too difficult to model each of them separately but you don't really want to sit and spend uh, time on coding on each of these parts separately trying to figure out how your differential is supposed to work and what actually happens when you change gears uh, on this on each of the gear gear uh, steering gear boxes how velocities change how they go back for this reason the whole drivetrain i'm building it right now from separate components so it would work it would work as a modular system so you can just add the components as i have it here you just drop the, drop in components then uh, here on the right side you specify the name of other components to which this specific component is connected and this way you can rather fast assemble the schema of your drivetrain and later for sure you have to tweak uh, parameters like what is your engine torque you how the clutch plate force and so on so uh, this is it yeah this current version is uh, already on the github it will recompile executable uh, so you can try to play with it i think if you drive the car with the manual gearbox you might find it quite easy to drive and if you don't uh, 
that could be a bit of a challenge. <laughs> okay, enjoy. <laughs>